Hey, you guys. Uh, welcome to uh, Get Real with Rick Dancer. We're at the Pearl Day Spa. That's why we're half naked um, or three quarters naked. And uh, we are going to talk about trigger points uh, massage today. Um, as you probably know, I have a really bad um, right shoulder. And so Sean at the Pearl Day Spa is our sponsor today, and he's going to come in. And um, we're going to work on this shoulder trigger point massage. So if I cry like a baby, you have to just put up with it because that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to try, but we're, that's what we're going to do. Hey, Sean. So Sean and Sally are coming in. Uh, she's going to be our photographer. There's Sean. So, um, there Hello. he is. Good hey, Sean. Morning. It's not morning anymore. It's not morning. <laughs> so, trigger massage. Get your head down here, buddy. Okay. So, what is trigger massage? <clears throat> so, trigger point therapy is a way um, to help eliminate myofascial pain. Uh, is is the best way to describe it. So, Mile, you, you you have a fascia that's over your muscle. That's mm -hmm. a clear like that stuff on meat. The the white stuff when you exactly. get a steak. Yeah, like silver skin when you see, especially deer meat. It's very visible. Um, it's on every meat. It encapsulates every nerve, every muscle, separates bone, attaches it. It's over everything. So, so when you're having pain, how does that, how does that, the fascia ex affect that? <clears throat> well, the, it becomes restricted. So, well, do you want me to dive into what a trigger point is? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, right. go for it. So, uh, trigger point is, is an irritated nodule of muscle fiber. So, um, not all knots are trigger points. So trigger points have some specific hallmark hallmark things about them. Um, they are painful. Uh, they refer pain when you push on them. So, you know, you push on an area and it will refer pain elsewhere. Um, it's not just sore in the area you push on. So, like, sometimes, you know, you'll push on your neck and you'll sort of feel this sort of thing happening up in your head. When you push on my neck here, I can feel it all the way down to my fingers. Right, yeah. Um, restricted range of motion. Sometimes there's no pain, but if you have an area that has a really restricted range of motion, that can be um, caused by a trigger point. Um, numbness, any type of weird dysfunctions, moving in a weird way, walking in a weird way, muscles firing in a weird way, those are all signs of, of trigger points. And there are two types. There's active and there's latent. So latent is, it's not bothering you until someone hits it and then it's kind of, you know, <clears throat> it lights up. And then active is it's actively referring, it's causing pain actively. Mine would be what you call anything. active. Yes, probably. <laughs> it's, right. it's a very active and, way. And that's normally when people come in is when it's in its active state. People don't know that they're there if they're latent. So it's normally active trigger points that bring people in. All right. Let's, I'm going to turn this camera around. We're going to have just our camera woman for the day. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. You, no. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You got to talk loud through the hole. <laughs> what? Yeah, through the hole. Yeah. I'll pick my head up and scream and tell them what you know how to do this. <clears throat> so the nice thing about trigger points is, actually, if you just look over there really quick, Sally. This is an example of the trigger points of the torso, uh, is that they form pretty predictably. So, you know, if someone's having chest pain, you can guess pretty reliably that the trigger points are going to be in, in predictable areas. Um, if someone's having referred neck pain, you can guess pretty reliably within a small margin of error that there are going to be trigger points in certain areas in the body. So you can go on there and you can find mine pretty fast. But, oh, sure, sure, yeah. Yep. So palpably they feel, it's funny because I've been doing this for so many years that I can feel them extremely apparently and most people are like, oh, how can you feel that? And I'm thinking in my head, how can you not feel that? Um, they feel almost like a, a pea, like a glass marble or a pea. Um, so what I'm looking for is not, it's not, the whole muscle is not contracted. Um, I mean, it may be, but I'm sort of digging through a muscle to find a extremely irritable um, nodule of tissue. Um, the sarcomeres, which are the kind of base base con contractile portions of a muscle uh, become irritated and they won't let go. So you're, are you, you're pushing them to, to, to try to relax them then? Well, right now I'm just trying to find where the best sweet spot is. I'm still kind of digging around to find the, the good spot. I think I'm 
honing in on one. Yeah, digging is a good word. <laughs> D- digging would be very appropriate. Yes. Oh. So a little bit of why trigger points form. A lot of people have different theories about why they form, uh, but they're all primarily based on some form of either trauma or overuse. So there are a couple main theories. Um, one is that either through injury or muscular overload or trauma, uh, the muscle just becomes taxed. It, 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 it gives out and micro trauma happens either immediately or over the course of you know weeks or months or years. And then it gets into this kind of nasty cycle where it's injured so it tightens up and then it doesn't have oxygen or lymph or any of the good things going into it and then it's just a sort of cycle of 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 ickiness that that continues on and on and on and on. Uh. Yeah. So there's another one that's more uh, biochemical which is uh, the nerve after being used for so long in a very specific way becomes exhausted. Um, and then a similar thing happens. The, the area becomes exhausted. None of the good stuff is flowing in or out properly. Um, and then it stops firing the way that it's supposed to fire. So there are, it's a hotly debated topic why trigger points form. You'll get a little bit different answer from every LMT or PT or doctor that you ask about it. I'm going to put your arm up here. So why does it work? It works because you are, well, you're manually breaking apart the little contractile fibers of tissue there. Oh. But another component is you're interrupting the nerve. So you will get sometimes what's called a twitch response. So get into the right area and it'll, you'll feel the area kind of jump. Is that that little bump, right? What's that little? Um, no, that's just dragging over tissue that's all bound up. But oh. I don't know if you've ever, I call them zing spots. Yeah. If you've ever been getting body work and someone gets into a spot and you just sort of involuntarily, uh-huh. yeah, twitch. Oh, see, I can feel that all the way down my hand. Right. That's good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Everything is, isn't it? Right. Oh, my God. So I wanted to do this today because of running season. Um, a lot of people come in this time of year. There's a lot of competitive running. People are back out running trails. They're hiking. They're biking. They're doing all the things that their bodies haven't been doing. And they're generally in some form of, of pain, either from injury or just their bodies being asked to do things it doesn't normally do. Oh. So if I normally I would be quiet so that I could be paying attention to really what's going on. This is kind of a hard thing to do when you're when you're oh, you've got it, talking? Sean. I, okay. No, you are. Um, you're right where it needs to be. So you would hold it, and I would be communicating with him about what the symptoms are like. So I would find an area. I would verify that this is referring or recreating the symptoms that you know he's come in to have addressed. And usually that takes some time because you don't just want to dig around and find a random tight spot. You want to find the spot that's creating the symptoms that the person comes in for. So once you verify that, then you can get into treating it. And usually you just start with pressure until you reproduce the symptoms. Um, Usually like a level five, six out of 10 as far as as pain goes, because too close to the top of the pain threshold and the body doesn't want to relax. It wants to brace the area even further. So you would hold it until the person reports that the symptoms are starting to subside. And then usually you go in a little bit deeper. And then same thing, wait until they tell you it's subsiding. And continue and continue. So and you just, with trigger point, you're just, you're just pushing on it. Yes, you're holding it. Right. And, and I'll tell you that, it does hurt, but it feels so good. Right. You know what I mean? It's like where it's, I think some people are afraid of it. But oh man, it is, oh. And it shouldn't ever feel, I always say it feels like pain release, not pain infliction. Right. And there's a distinct difference. It's, I, I, don't, I couldn't really explain, I couldn't verbalize how it feels differently, but there is definitely a difference between someone injuring you versus releasing something. So how do you know the right play? You just from feel? Yeah, you can, the chart helps a lot. If you want to come around to this side, Sally. <clears throat> I'm going to get into this one. 
Wait, but this is your badge folder, isn't uh -huh. it? Yeah, let's go over to this thing. Is anybody asking any questions, Sally? Uh, not yet. Okay. If they do like a little white thing comes up and they say something or a question, you can just tell us what they're saying. Okay. Just interrupt us, it's fine. Okay, so this right here is the uh, infraspinatus in the scoop of the scapula here. So it's one of the four rotator cuff muscles. Supraspinatus is up here, teres, there's all these muscles that are kind of holding your shoulder in. So I would say 90% of shoulder pain is somehow related to one of these rotator cuff muscles referring pain. So a lot of the time people have this shoulder pain that feels nagging and they're rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Well, the source is not there, so no amount of rubbing there is going to do anything. It's almost always referred from somewhere else um, in, in the shoulder, in the rotator cuff. This one is particularly lovely because it's easy to reproduce that referred pain. So again, predictable. There's often a trigger point down there and one in here, so we'll kind of dig in until we find a good... Uh. Oh, that's easy to find. It's like... <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hello. Yes. <laughs> And most people describe this one as, as if someone is reaching inside their shoulder joint. Like it just feels like, yeah. I can't explain it. it, just feels like pressure inside of your shoulder joint. It's kind of uh, odd. And again, all the way down my finger, right. mm -hmm. on my arm. Oh, man. So if this were a real treatment, I mean, I could hang out in one trigger point for five, seven, ten minutes. You know, you're really wanting to get through those different thresholds, um, constantly communicating with the person, making sure you're not going beyond their, their pain tolerance, that the body's not eliciting a... So do, do, do we put up with too much pain, do you think? I mean, are, it hurts and we just sort of, instead of going to get treated, we I just... I think so, yes. And especially here in the U.S., we, no one really claims medicine of the physical body. I mean, a, a PT, you know, fixes dysfunction, but if you had a problem with your physical body, where, where do you go? You know, you go to the doctor, maybe they give you muscle relaxers or something, and, um, but roughly 40% of our body is muscle, and it's kind of weird that in the U.S. we don't have a high-level medical profession that claims, you know, treating the soft tissues of the body. In a lot of other countries, they have a physiatrist or the physio, which is kind of somewhere a blend of a doctor and a physical therapist, so they treat um, the physical body uh, with things like trigger point and dry needling and stretch and spray, and it's kind of all the physical treatments that people, different people do here are combined into one, one therapist, a physiatrist or a physiotherapist. I hear people say like they're afraid to go, oh, I've never had a massage, and I just, I don't know. I just can't imagine it being an athlete or doing as much stuff as I do. Right. Not go, I mean, it's, it's like, it has to be part of my life, you know? I, I actually think, even though trigger point can be maybe a little more intense, I think that it can be a nice introduction to massage because it's less, it feels a little more clinical. You know, if someone right. is uncomfortable with, you know, maybe someone's hands just really being in contact with a lot of places on their body, <laughs> it can feel safer, maybe is a better word, Yeah. Uh, to have this more focused, this focused pressure. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty gnarly in there. Oh, uh, it feels so good. And it hurts, but it feels really good. And this, I will say, uh, I'm kind of going to dog on my own profession here for a second. If you are going to go look for someone that practices trigger point, uh, just be wary. It's kind of one of those things where someone could attend, you know, a weekend trigger point therapy seminar and say, oh, yeah, I practice trigger point, and I've practiced this for 10 years, and I feel like. I'm just, you know, getting my toes wet, really, to where I would feel like yeah, I, can, I can do trigger point pretty well. I don't feel like I'm an expert, but... Tina has a question. Is it good for people who have had trigger point injections to keep doing physical therapy? To keep doing physical therapy? Yes. Um, I'm not sure if I'm understanding... Does your question relate to massage in some way that I'm not... 
that I'm not getting. Hopefully she'll respond. Let's see. Let me read your question. Oh, um, Tina, I'm not a PT, so I can't answer that, but I will say that part of the benefit of trigger point injections is that it breaks up the the pain cycle. So, you know, you have pain that's limiting a range of motion in an area that is often preventing you from doing the exercise or motion in that area of body, which would be therapeutic to you. So it can be helpful to continue doing stretching, strengthening, exercises, massage, um, when you've had trigger point injections, because it allows you to do things with that area of your body that you wouldn't normally be able to do without is, the injection. Is this considered an injection? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. That's, it, that's something different? That's like yes. a... So a trigger point injection is usually um, done by um, a doctor or a nurse practitioner, and they'll actually inject the trigger point with lidocaine and they'll kind of dig around and then inject the area and it helps break up the pain cycle. So you don't feel that local pain so it can help stop that, that um, the cycle of pain. So you're not feeling the pain, then you're not bracing the area anymore and then more nutrition can start to flow. You start using the area more regularly and it, it just disrupts that dysfunctional cycle. And I'm in a very dysfunctional cycle. You're in a dysfunctional cycle. I am. Not just in your body. No, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you go to someone to have trigger point, make sure that you know them really well because they're going to know you. That's right. <laughs> so things that this is good for. Um, oh, God. Headaches, TMJ. Mm. Uh, a lot of people have weird facial stuff going on and... It's Are you talking funny. about me? No. <laughs> no. God, that really feels good. You know, uh, numbness oh. or tingling or odd things that are not really explained by mm. by other other treatments. A trigger oh. point can be can be really effective. A common weird one is people that have digestive stuff. A lot of the referral for trigger points in the mid back is through to your stomach. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had. Have you ever eaten something and um, either that gives you indigestion or you eat too much or something and you feel yeah. sort of back pain right there. Yeah. That's usually because of that relationship between the front of the body and the back of the body. I didn't know that. So, conversely, trigger points here can give you feelings of nausea or indigestion. And a lot of the time people will think they have some sort of digestive thing when really it's um, referred pain from a trigger point. Sally, can you show him like on my neck? Yes. What's that? Like, just what he's doing. That, mm -hmm. That's intense. There you go. Oh, did you see the... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can drag over again to get that twitch. There you go. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but that's a good sign when you're trying to find a trigger point that you're on the right area is that muscle giving you a twitch response. Mm. So it's not just breaking up the tension, the physical tension of the muscle, you are um, kind of resetting the nerve communication. There was just another one right there. And that can result in all kinds of weird stuff. It's not just pain. I mentioned that earlier. It can be weakness or it can change the way that you walk. It can change the way, you know, your range of motion limits. It can do a lot of odd things and if there are active or latent trigger points other methods you know you do other things you stretch it or oh I need to strengthen that area they are, are a lot less effective if the trigger point is not addressed so they just sort of come back and the other the other component of this that's really really important if I was doing this in a full therapy session is that after I would after I treated the trigger point, I would take it through its range of motion. Um, and that's a really important step is to treat the trigger point and then do either a passive or active stretch to take the area through its range of motion. Sean, that is so awesome. It's good. Well, have you, you're a massage person, right? Yeah. You get massage, yeah. So you've probably experienced these. Oh, God. Yeah, there's usually a good one right in there. 
I am resisting all temptation to say, you know, the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm in my own massage therapy session, I do. Oh. <laughs> That's totally fine. Oh. That's the one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's it. That's the one. Oh. If you guys have never done this before, you're insane. You need to do it. I'll tell you what, I feel come out of these and I feel like I'm a whole new person. And if you do any kind, I mean, any kind of pain that you're having like that, or especially if you're somebody who works out or is really active or has a high stress job on your neck, don't you think, Sean? Like, oh, stress. Absolutely. You went in and did this. I'll tell you what. Even just once a month, you'd feel so much better. I mean, that's what I do. I have to do it or, oh, God. I'll tell you kind of a funny story, stress, repetitive use, stress, job-related stuff. So you remember when OCCU was ULANO like a million years ago? Uh Uh-huh. And they used to have just a keyboard-based system. Uh Uh-huh. And I used to work on, you know, some people that were at ULANO and just your normal desk job type things. But then when they converted to a system that started using a mouse, the weirdest thing, everyone starts coming in with, oh, my right yeah. shoulder, arm, neck, all these problems start coming up. And, you know, we think pain is coming from these massive traumatic things that we do to our body. And usually it's not. It's just little things that we do over and over and over and over in our daily lives that accumulate. And I notice I feel better problems. on Monday because I'm not using my computer, my mouse all weekend. Right. Yes. And so I get, and you, cause you get to that position on your desk right. and you start hunching, you, cause you can't, you're not thinking about it, you know? Right. And you hunch over, oh my gosh. I'm not complaining, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, just, you just you push as hard as you want, but that is phenomenal. Oh, oh. Sorry, right. it's, I have to brace my hand so it's hard to probably for the camera to see what's going on under my oh. finger. I'll tell you what's going on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, you're not a deep tissue person, right? You don't like really deep work. Oh, no, but I do no. like trigger point. You do like trigger point? I do point. like trigger point. Can, oh. Why do you think that you like trigger point but not generally deep massage? For those people out there that are like, I wouldn't like that. I don't like deep work. You know, I haven't really thought about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. You are putting me on yes, the spot. That's okay. Because it does relieve it, right, Sally? I mean, when you have a pain like that. Oh, yeah. Trigger like, point is phenomenal. Oh. I think that really it's... I think poorly executed deep tissue massage can just feel really invasive sometimes. And you don't necessarily get the long-term relief. So maybe that's partially what it is, is that you associate this form of maybe temporary discomfort with a longer term benefit or relief and the right. body says all right i can handle some intensity for a little bit if it means relief for an extended period of time i think i like how in, like, specific the pressure is to one area and mm-hmm. feeling kind of that immediate effect i just don't think i i don't like the deep tissue all over my body that's right. like too much stimulation mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, this shoulder. Yeah, it's pretty fried. And it's getting better. <laughs> it was really bad. So some simple trigger point stuff that you can do on yourself at home is, one, you can just find an area that feels tight and you can treat it yourself um, just using the same things that I was talking about. It's not just a tight area. You're gonna look for those areas that you press them and then you feel them elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then just hang out there until you feel it subside and then either move somewhere else or continue to progress a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper into that tissue until you feel like the symptoms uh, subside. And then stretching is great, another thing to do after trigger point is contrast therapy so hot cold and that's sort of imagine it's pumping so the cold is contracting the area and the heat is kind of blasting it open and then open and close and open and close can really help break up that um, dysfunctional cycle you know what i do sean i take a tennis ball 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you and go. I have a tennis ball, yeah. and I have one in my car, and when I drive, I put it under my cheek, my, yep. and that's my butt cheek. Your butt cheek. And then uh, when I need it, and then I also roll against the wall. I'll stand on yes. the wall on my back, and I can roll against that and do kind of what you're doing. Yeah. Not like you're doing it, but it's it's a relief in between. So the tennis ball, and then you can go up from there with either uh, a rugby ball or a racket ball. Yeah. So those are a little firmer. And then you can also oh. change the surface you're on. You can't do it on a bed. There's not enough no. resistance. You can do it on a carpet for less intensity. You can do it on a hardwood or tile floor for more intensity. Or you can do it up against the wall. Yeah. We have a round um, hard ball that's a massage ball. Right. And I'll just take that and roll up and down the wall like a bear scratching his back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Sean, that feels so good. good. Oh. You guys, if you have never done this before, you really have to. Oh. I'm thinking just anybody that works at a computer. Computer, okay. any type of athlete, if you're a runner, if you're a uh, cyclist, if you're a human that has a body, you know, any, anything like that. So is that a knot that you're trying to stretch the muscle out? Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to find the this is generally just tight and I'm trying to find the area that is kind of the the sweet spot in it. And I haven't quite oh. haven't quite found oh. There you go. <laughs> it's not as torturous as it looks. No, because I'm saying don't stop, but that does hurt, but it's like, I know what's going to feel like when I leave this room today, and that's what you're looking for. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have a friend, and he goes, oh, I don't think I could do that, and I'm like, man, you would, you are kill, you are really missing out, because it's just a little bit of, I don't even think it's pain. For me, it's not pain. It, you know what I mean? It's right. tension. Yes. But it doesn't feel, to me, this does not feel like pain. It feels like it's, I, I can feel relief. And there's a difference. You know what I mean? You there know what I mean. There's definitely a difference. Until you've done it, I don't think people really know. That's kind of the deep tissue thing. You can just dig an elbow or a finger into someone's back and it's going to hurt, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a productive kind of hurt. That's what we're looking for is a productive hurt. Does anyone have any questions on there, Sally? Not really any questions. Okay. Um, Robert suggests a Theracane works really oh, well yes. during pressure points. Theracanes are great. So Theracane is kind of like a J-hooked kind of thing, or they make the back knobber, which is more like an S. Oh, and yeah. you can do self, yeah, you can do self oh, um, wow. trigger point therapy. Um, those are awesome. I have one at home, and it's great. Similar concept to the tennis ball or the racquetball. Mm -hmm. You're just using the... I have using three rollers. Three all, foam rollers? All different. One of them has the big... The knobbers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I use that on, you know, some of it, mm. and um, you just have to be kind of careful. But that feels really good, like laying down at night on the floor. Oh. All right, we better wrap up and let you get on with your day. Oh. Do you want to turn the camera back over to Sally? Oh. Okay. Or back over to you. All right, you guys, so again, um, if you've never had trigger point therapy done, trigger point therapy is what yep. you call it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you really should check it out. Pearl Day Spa, call in, get an appointment, because I'm telling you, it really does, I feel a thousand times better. Okay. And I wasn't even in horrible pain when I came in here, but I, it's because when you get used to it, you kind of, your body's an amazing thing. Um, it becomes more receptive over time. So Pearl Day Spa, right on Pearl Street. I'm just down from Vero Coffee, uh, just off of 13th, uh, just another block down. Um, and uh, make an appointment and uh, take care of it, especially if you have any kind of stress. Go ahead. You can go to our website and you can book online, Pearl Day Spa, thepearldayspa.com. There's links all over the website to, to book online. So. so guys, if you take this and share it on your page, um, other people you may not know, nobody's going to go around talking about that I work out too hard or I feel horrible. <laughs> That's not something everybody does all the time. Let them know and uh, somebody might check it out and, and go from there. So... Um, Thanks for being here today. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to be with the Head Start folks. Um, there's a free fishing weekend for Head Start kids to help raise money, and so we're going to go out with them fishing. And later this week, I cannot remember because right now I feel so good, I just don't care. <laughs> so have a good week. You got a hair out of place oh, there. Oh, God.
oh my god the day is over <laughs> okay all right so we're gonna shoot a little video you guys go do your rest of your day and i will see you um on wednesday for sure probably tomorrow for a little ad lib show or something all right sean thank you okay. Sally, thank you thank you you're an excellent camera woman all right guys we'll see ya